This podcast is brought to you by the World Apostolate to Fatima USA, a public association of the faithful devoted to spreading the authentic message of Fatima. Hello, my name is Barb Ernster. I'm here with Father Francisco Pereira, chaplain of the Shrine of Fatima in Portugal. He's here on sabbatical in the United States. He's staying with us at the National Blue Army Shrine of Our Lady of Fatima in Washington, New Jersey. So, Father, welcome. How is your trip to the United States going? Yeah, it's going very good. Um, I uh, I have more time to pray now yeah. and to read and to keep studying. So, it's I'm been sure. a very good days here in the shrine. I'm sure you needed a break after last year. How many pilgrims actually came to Fatima last year? We have almost 10 mil- million, oh my goodness. Um, nine and a half million. So uh, it was a, a, a little bit more than we what we expected. But uh-huh. it was a grace of God to be able to receive so many pilgrims, to pray with them, to um, preach the, the mes- message of the gospel and and message of Fatima that is connected and to be able to reach so many people who wanted to come to Fatima to connect with God and with Our Lady of Fatima, that she's uh, the mother of God, and take us by the hand to, to lead us to, to our Father, our common Father. Yeah. Well, we're so glad you're getting a little bit of a break right now and that you're able to rest in New Jersey at our shrine. It's very quiet and peaceful there. So. Yes, yes, it is. So I wanted to get into, I know um, I wanted to get into a little bit about your background. You grew up very near to Fatima. Was it in Leiria, Portugal? Yes, I am from Leiria. Is the, the head of the diocese. It's uh, uh, about 40 minutes to Fatima, to the Shrine of Fatima. And since I I'm, was a kid, we went there for many times a year for the diocesan pilgrimage, for the children's national pilgrimage, for family meetings. So I start, I remember the, the little chapel with the whole uh, cover and the old uh, uh, burning of the candles. So I remember in the 70s to be there with not so many people like, like mm-hmm. it was today, but uh, already a big um, important shrine for the dioceses and for the, the our country, of, for Portugal. And for me, I was growing knowing Our Lady of Fatima, knowing that she is our mother, she helps us, knowing the life of the little shepherds, their prayers and sacrifices, what they did. So I I was growing in this uh, knowledge and connection with Our Lady. Yeah, and helped me to in my vocation also this this role of Mary as um, the one who said firstly yes to to God in this project of salvation that God has to all of us. Mm -hmm. Did it resonate with you when you were growing up that just 40 miles away, one of the greatest miracles on earth happened right in your area? Yeah, because we all knew the, the story of Fatima. We all knew about the miracle of the sun of all these hundreds of people who went there right from the beginning. So it was a central place in our diocese life of faith. And even in my family, in my life of faith, Fatima was also one center of connection with God. Mm -hmm. So we went there many times a year to be able to pray and celebrate and, and be with Mary, our mother. Did you ever think you would end up being chaplain at the Shrine of Fatima? No, never. <laughs> I wanted when I went to the well, when I went to the seminary, and afterwards I want to be a parish priest to 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 help a community to grow, to celebrate mass for for the people, to be able to grow with them and to be with a small community in a parish. I never thought to go to to Fatima. I wanted to to preach and to celebrate the sacraments, the Eucharist, the confession especially. And that's what I wanted to do. So it was a, a surprise when my bishop, uh, Antonio Marto, um, nominated me as a chaplain uh, of the shrine. And, and how long have almost, you been there? No. Yeah, I, I'm I'm being there for 10 years, almost 10 years. 11. So it's 
Uh, well, you're in charge of a very big parish that the whole world yes, is interested in. So. That's the interesting thing. Yet, I, I was finding that here in Fatima, I have new responsibilities. I have a community bigger, but also a more, a little bit more demanding. What, which is for me, is good because I'm constantly being challenged to grow in my faith, to study. Um, not only the message of Fatima, because uh, for these ten years I was discovering always new things, new, new aspects of the message of Fatima that is need to be uh, relevated, and even in my deep understanding of the message of of God, of the gospel that Jesus brought to us. The, context of theology that we try to reach the people in their new needs uh, right in this 21st century and being able to help them to grow in faith, in charity, and in hope. When you meet with the pilgrims and they're coming there, are you finding that the younger ones are receptive to the message of Fatima? And what, what are some of the things that you find when you're meeting with the pilgrims? Everybody are receptive to the message of Fatima, especially the, the young generations that um, some we usually do not look with um, with good eyes because we think that they are superficial and they just want to to live in the network scene. But I, I find that they want to discover more. They want a more uh, a, a, a deeper meaning for life, and they are searching. Well, sometimes they are not searching in the right places, but Fatima is pre when we can present the message of Fatima in a new light and show them that the, the, the words that Our Lady told to the little shepherds relates to everyday problems, to every, uh, even uh, human situation, so they can relate, and they they find that message of Fatima is also a new way to see the world, to see the the challenge of their lives, and even to help them to overcome all these difficulties that they are um, they are feeling and they are finding. And are there many that come there and really don't know the story, and then? Once they hear the story of Fatima, how do they go deeper? Are they interested then in going deeper? Yes, because, well, uh, almost everybody, the, the, the vast majority of the people do not know all the message of Fatima. They know the Our Lady appeared. They know the, the three children that received the message. But that's it. Um, we, and when we go deep in the message of Fatima, when we go deep, in this need of personal conversion, of personal transformation, of a, a prayerful life to to reach this communion with God and to enter in this light that is God who surrounds us and pierces our heart, they they find this very very. Uh, challenging and but then they but they also want to to reach this uh, this meaning in their lives to reach this uh, plant uh, this more fruitful uh, mm -hmm. way to <clears throat> to live uh, be beginning with the message of Fatima that is is a way to uh, in a contemporary way to reach the deepness of the gospel <laughs> now, how does the message of Fatima help you as a priest? You you also are named after a great saint now, Saint Francisco Marto. So, <clears throat> I'd like you to talk a little bit about how Fatima helps you as a priest, and how does Francisco, in particular, inspire you? Well, as a priest, and receiving the message of Fatima, he helps me to be a better priest because um, the prayer life is essential for my for my life. Uh, to pray every day, not only the the breviary that is mandated to when we are ordained, 
but also to have a, a deeper connection with God and be able to stay in the presence of God every day, to contemplate God like St. Francis Marto uh, did, for me, helps me to find this tranquility and peace of mind that is needed to to leave all these challenges of this mm -hmm. work that we are living because in the shrine we are almost always running from one side to the other because <clears throat> the shrine is big the, the places of uh, ministry are a little bit apart uh, so we are always going to the basilica of the our lady of trinity the little chapel the basilica of our lady of the rosary and meetings and preparations so the I have need to stop and pray, so the help of uh, and the example of Francis Marco helps me to be able to stop and pray to reach this intimacy with God. And then, following the example of Jacinta, to see um, all the persons that I cross in my daily life as a, a person why which I can help a person who are uh, asking for something good and ask me for uh, give them. And being a priest, being a, a minister of the Word and of the sacraments, uh, being able to deliver this help to the people is very fruitful. And then I have this example of St. Jacinta to be always thinking about the others and giving their everyday life for the salvation of the poor sinners and that's why i think that the message of fatma is helping me to be um, a better priest every day and you studied technology in coimbra where sister lucia lived for 57 years at the convent yeah. were you um aware of her in that town were you aware she was there did you ever get a chance to go visit the convent and maybe go to mass there or well, uh, I was aware that she lived in the convent because we are from... But uh, I never had the opportunity during my studies to, to go there. Okay. Um, I went there right after my ordination and I concelebrated in the Mass. And she, even when she she was really old, but she always had the, the speakers transmitting the masses that are celebrated in the in the chapel to herself so okay. especially when they have a group from lady of fatima uh -huh. celebrating mass in the convent she always gave uh, the biggest attention uh -huh. uh, and so um and but i met her uh, before my ordination because i was an altar server when pope St. John Paul II came oh. for the second time to Fatima oh, wow. in 91, 1991. I was an altar server. I was in the seminary. So um, I was seated right near Sister Lucia. And oh. that's a wonderful thing because when I went to, to Fatima for to, to work there as a chaplain, I went to see... Um, the office for the canonization of little shepherds and sister angela gave me a photo when uh of sister lucia and me right next to her just mm -hmm. with father condor between me and sister lucia so for me oh my goodness it was a, a very <laughs> good surprise because during the mass i was so focused on what we are doing in mm -hmm. the in the in the mess that I didn't notice <laughs> that oh, she was right ne near me, but uh -huh. yeah, but and that's the, only the 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 only time that I have uh, in the presence of Sister Lucia. Yeah, it's a beautiful story, really wonderful. We'd like to see a photo of that. We'd like to get a copy yeah, of that. Yeah, I have the put it in our Soul magazine. <laughs> in my in my office, yes. Yeah. Well, when I was in Fatima last year uh, in November, you gave a catechesis to us pilgrims at our hotel, Domus Pacis, in Fatima. Yes. I imagine you do that often for the pilgrims. But yes. I, I found it was very interesting how, um, you know, now that the centennial is over, what, 
what are you focusing on now? How are you, what is the shrine going to be looking at this year and, and coming years? Yes. So, well, these, these next years, we are, uh, we are especially in this time giving thanks for the, for the grace of, of Fatima, for, for the grace of, and the gift uh, that God gave us with the message of Fatima, with the presence of Our Lady, and the, this message of grace and mercy. So we are trying to develop this message and to keep uh, deepening the, the meaning, especially because we think that the, the, the value of the message of Fatima, the meaning of the message of Fatima, is for everyday life, is forever, not just for 400 years, but is keeps going mm -hmm. and growing and deepening. So now we are giving thanks to God, and next year we are celebrating the centennial of the death of uh, St. Francis Marto, and mm -hmm. the next year the centennial of the death of uh, St. Jacinta Marto. So we have these examples of the little shepherds. Now they are saints, so we we can have more uh, more freedom to to promote and present their holiness as an example for everybody. Yes, and that's. Uh, I think that the most important thing now is to keep showing their holiness, uh, so that the people can learn to live a holy life in the daily matters, not being just an extraordinary uh, person. Well, yes, we may, we can be extraordinary in a normal life. So, and Saint Francis, as Saint Jacinta shows, uh, he is he, not need to found the convent. There is no need to found a new movement. There is no need to go to the TVs and give talks or have. But we can we can be true saints in our daily lives, taking mm -hmm. care of our business loving each other, living in a family, praying mm -hmm. the rosary every day and making small sacrifices for 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 the conversion of the world. So I think mm -hmm. that is the great grace that we have now these two children to help us in this uh, in this growth of the church and of the holiness of the world. Well, and I think sometimes we don't understand the power of our offerings of these little sacrifices every day. But that was what Lucia said was the essential message of Fatima, was that very first question Our Lady asked on May 13th, are you willing to give yourselves every day and accept what God is going to uh, do yes. in your life? So that is truly, it's a simple message. It doesn't, doesn't have to be explained, and all of us can do it. Yes, that's why the message of Fatima is still so strong, because this first question that Our Lady asked Lucia is also what God is asking us every day. Do you want to offer yourselves? And to be a Christian is to offer ourselves for the for the salvation of the world, to mm -hmm. uh, be holy. And that's what, why I think that uh, this new um, apostolic exhortation of Pope Francis uh, it's right after we celebrate the centennial, right after he canonized two small children who live these uh, holy lives in the daily daily matters, is a good example of what we can continue to do, to mm -hmm. live our holy lives in the daily matters, to pray uh, these simple prayers that Our Lady taught to the children, and be able to change the world with our life. Mm -hmm. Well, I, if there's, if, do you have anything else you'd want to relay to people on this beautiful message? Yes, it's this uh, call to change the world, changing ourselves. And I remember that uh, Our Lady asked the little shepherds to build a small chapel in in the prison of August and September. And so uh, God wants us to to build this Catholic communion, to build the church not just the building, but the community, the, the mm -hmm. body of men and women throughout the world. So uh, I think that now is the time to to keep building this community, to keep reaching each other, uh, go forth and try to, to find men and women 
who have the will to be different than the world proposes, to be uh, more than they are, to go deep in their meaning of the life. So I think the message of Fatima, the what Our Lady told to little shepherds and tells us what they lived and, and teach us to live is a good way to grow in faith and to grow in our daily lives. Well, Father, thank you so much. We're going to leave it at that, and I really appreciate your time with Thank us. Thank you for morning. your time. Thank God you. God bless you. God bless you.